Hi, Kelly Clement here. In today's power tool tip, we're going to be talking about pattern analysis in the forecaster. The forecaster will actually allow you to either draw or copy a pattern right off of a chart. So this is a really unique feature about the forecaster and being able to do this pattern analysis. So let's go ahead and take a look at this power tool tip. Let's go ahead and go into Metastock. So to get into the Forecaster, I am going to go down to the Forecaster tab in the Power Console. We are going to type in Apple for our security example. You can do this with any security. It doesn't have to be Apple. You can do, use anything you'd like. And we're going to choose Start Forecaster. So as the Forecaster comes up, you have a couple of options here, and we're going to cover both options and what you can do. With the forecaster, as I mentioned, we can draw a pattern or we can copy a pattern. If we were going to copy a pattern, we'd use user-defined pattern select. We're actually going to start with drawing our own pattern and then we'll go back and copy a pattern. So I'm going to go into the recognizer library. This is actually where it shows all the available patterns that I have available. And let's go ahead and draw a new pattern. So when I'm drawing a new pattern, the first thing I need to do is give it a name. So I'm just going to call this my V pattern. And then I've drawn this pattern before, so I'm going to put a three after it so I know what it is. And then you can give it a description if you want, if you want to say this looks for a pivot point or something like that. And if we think of a V pattern, we're really looking at this V. So what I can do now here in this pattern and shape and location and orientation box, I can draw the pattern I'm looking for. So let's just say I draw a pattern like that. So there's my V, so that's what I want to look for. Now you can do whatever you want. So if you're say looking for an M pattern, you could look for an M pattern or you could look for a uh, double top or double bottom or anything like that. So you can really freehand this and put in what you want. So let's go ahead and do our V as an example. I like a V because it's a pivot point. We kind of have that number of bars down, number of bars up, so it gives us a good direction. Now what you can say is you, you can say if you want it to be available on daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, intraday. So we're going to, we'll just leave everything selected here. And then you can do shape only and shape and location. Now shape only is just going to look for that V pattern. So um, if you're to do shape and location, if I were to only draw the V up in the top right hand corner of the screen, that's where it's going to look for it is only if it's at the upper end of a chart. So that's really important to think about that shape and location. Typically I'll only do shape, but you have that option to do shape and location. And then approximate number of price bars. What this does for us, so if I take my V pattern example here, and if I say number of bars down four, and then number of bars up for, that's my eight bar pattern. So you can make that as big or as small as you want. If I wanted two bars up and two bars down, I can do that as well, it's up to you. Pattern match sensitivity is all about how loose it can be, or maybe it was four bars down, three bars up, kind of that similar pattern, very close, so you can set that sensitivity there. And then the default cloud focus is how far out it will paint the probability cloud out once you've selected that. If you're not familiar with the forecaster, there's some other videos that you can watch and kind of run through the probability cloud and how to use those, but we're just going to go ahead and sit with our example here. Uh, so if you make changes to the pattern, so example, if I come in here and I say, hey, I want some points to come down. If you want to restore something, you click it here, or you can actually just move things back after you've moved them around, so you can do that as well. So you can change that. You can do under, do pattern change, clear your pattern out, so if I wanted to erase it completely. Um, and then we can invert the pattern if we want to. So if you want it to be top bottom instead, you can do that, reverse it. V is not really gonna reverse very much, so that'll stay the same. And then we can go ahead and save that pattern that I've drawn. Now you can see different patterns that I have in here. This is our pattern that we've just done, this V pattern number three. And now if I want to apply that to Apple, all I have to do is select Rescan Selected Analysis. And that'll go through Apple and look for that pattern again. And that pattern's now saved, so it can, I, I can actually apply it to any chart. It doesn't have to be just Apple. 
So here's my different patterns down here that I have selected. And let's go ahead and look for our V pattern number three. Okay, and now you can see different examples of when it's actually matched that pattern here. So if I come in and I hover over it, you'll now see the blue line here is actually the pattern that I drew. And then the red line is actually what it looks like on the chart. So you can see there's a little bit of deviation there. It's not quite the same, but it gives us a pattern match confidence of 76%. So that's a pretty good match and gives us a close pattern there. So once I've selected that, I can actually just click on my, my highlight here, and that will give me the forecast cloud for that particular pattern. So it, it'll match up fairly well there. As you can see, it stayed right within that pattern and then broke out there towards the end. So really good uh, matching of the patterns here. Let's just take a look at another V that I've drawn historically here. So you can see this is a previous one that I've drawn. It's another V pattern, same type of scenario there. And then we can go in and we can look at all these different ones. This one's a same 76% match, but that pattern analysis worked extremely well there where you can see the price stayed pretty much right within that probability cloud. So it works extremely well. Now, the other thing that I talked about that we can do is we can actually copy patterns right off the chart. So if I come up here and I select this user defined pattern select, I can select a pattern. All I have to do is just hold down my mouse and copy. And let's just say I like that pattern. I like it when Apple does that, I want to be able to see when it happens. So I'll just highlight that pattern. And let's go ahead and just call this our Apple top. Okay. And we'll just leave everything else the same here. We'll go ahead and choose save. And then we'll rescan our selected analysis and see if we get an Apple top anywhere else on the screen. Okay, let's go ahead and look for our Apple top. We'll select that pattern. And you can see it's happened multiple times throughout to Apple's history. And you can see that pattern match there again, whether it's matching or not. And then we can select our probability cloud. And you can see that it stayed relatively close to that same direction of price in this one, but not exactly the same. So we can see that that V pattern actually worked better on Apple than this particular shape and pattern did. So that's uh, selecting and copying and drawing your own charts right within the forecaster. This is a very powerful tool, it's something that you can use very easily uh, within the forecaster and apply these to any charts that you trade. I hope that you have found this power tip useful and can apply it to your trading and I wish you success.